Hello, you guys. Welcome to another episode of In the Glow. I'm Deb Kilgore, Director of Educational Programs. And I am Shaylee Heindel, the Product Education Specialist, Paul Trace. And today we're talking about the body. Yes, body <laughs> care. And uh, I actually think this is a great topic, and I, yeah. I love a handful of these. Well, I love all these products, <laughs> but I have some favorites in here, so I think this is good. And I think um, we can get a little more relaxed when it comes to body totally. care, but um, skin is skin, and so mm -hmm. it really on the body it benefits from all the same things that the face does yeah and it's not like you have to treat your entire body with your exact same five seven eight step routine that you use on your face but it can be helpful to apply what you know about treating common concerns on your face to the rest of your body such as hard red bumps dryness dehydration rough skin texture and we've got a lot of great products that address all of those concerns and more absolutely and I think one of the I think this is also a good chance to give some love to a product that we just don't talk about a lot and maybe some people new to our brand don't even you know they're not even aware that we have it it's the all over hair and body shampoo in the new packaging yes so it matches all of its friends I really love it why do you I love, love the packaging mm -hmm. and I love that product. So for yeah. me, this is a one and done when I'm traveling. You can use it in your hair, wash your face with it, and wash your entire body. So you don't have to take a multitude of products if you didn't want to. I always smell things still, but that's fragrance a really, free. <laughs> it's a big point of difference for our, our line, but also our body products. It's so hard to find really effective, gentle cleansing and moisturizing products for the body that don't have fragrance. Virtually impossible. And I would say that if somebody is really struggling with kind of irritated skin, reactive skin, itchy skin on the body, mm -hmm. Getting rid of those, um, and you know, I love them too, right? <laughs> the whole kind of sensorial experience when yeah. you're taking a shower and mm -hmm. the, the fragrant smell or whatever kind of scent that you like. Right. But if you have sensitive skin and you have like itchiness, redness, et cetera, you might want to consider going fragrance colorant free mm -hmm. um, for a body wash. I think just omitting some of those other ingredients um, you know, can help minimize some of that irritation. Absolutely. So just to clarify, this product is for both hair and body. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and that's another yeah. point of difference makes it unique. Like I said, it's great for traveling, but I think really, you know, anybody who um, uh, is looking for a fragrance-free body wash, which again is virtually impossible to find, yeah. they should give this a try. And bar soaps are definitely a no-no. We say shy yeah. away from those. Um, the pH of those can be anywhere from 9 to 11. So they'll clean really well, but it's also stripping your skin of all those good things yeah. um, you know, that naturally live in skin. Yeah, absolutely. And pro tip, this makes a really great makeup brush cleanser. Oh, nice. So just throw that out there. It's the best value on the market. That's if you're very good. For that. Very good. I like it. Well, so after you clean your skin, you get out of the shower. Next step moisturizing yes but we do moisturizing really well here in the sense that we have a number of moisturizing exfoliating products mm -hmm. as well as some really great active and less active just gentle cleansing or I'm sorry gentle moisturizers right so it's the same sort of concept you know uh, the skin on your body in terms of which body care products you're going to use it really depends on kind of what you want to address what are your primary concerns what is your skin type on your body which can differ from your face yeah um, and so you'll look at those things and you can pick a few core items um, from the lineup to address those. Absolutely. And I think, I mean, this is great. This is just such a great example. I get so excited because Paula's <laughs> Choice just, we always do a little extra. This is like body right. care beyond the basics. Right. And so we've got, just like we do for our face, we have a number of AHA and BHA exfoliants in various strengths, different textures. Mm -hmm. For the body, we also have AHA and BHA, and especially when it comes to BHA, we have a liquid and we've got a body cream. When would you use the spray over the moisturizer? Well, I, I think it really depends. I mean, these these body moisturizers with the benefit of exfoliants in mm -hmm. them are nice because it's doing double duty, right? You're getting that moisturization, the hydration, mm -hmm. plus the exfoliation all rolled up in one product. Right. Um, this one I feel like is a little bit more of a targeted product, right? Mm -hmm. um, you don't necessarily need the hydration or the moisturization, but you want to make sure that you get that a good dose of 2% salicylic acid in those areas. Right. Which and is you know perfect for back, knee, or shoulder, right. 
chest acne wherever it may be occurring. And for anybody just tuning in, we're talking about the clear acne body spray and the 2%, the weightless body treatment, 2% BHA. I like this one too because if you're not going to take the time to massage in a moisturizer after your shower and you just need something to treat hard red bumps, like you said, back knee, or even just built up dead skin mm -hmm. that might be causing a rough bumpy texture, you can just spray this on, call it a day, walk out the door, and you didn't have to spend that extra time really working the product into your skin. But if you want to, you can. Yeah, I think that's a good point, actually. The clear um, spray uh, can be used anywhere, right? So it's not just for acne, mm -hmm. even though the clear line, you know, is kind of an anti-acne routine. You can absolutely use this on any area of the for body. Sure. Um, so acne, like you said, hard red bumps, mm -hmm. or just if you want exfoliation. Yeah, or if you're like me and you like to layer the 2% BHA spray, underneath the 10% AHA skin revealing. Yeah. I like the fact that this does really help with my hard red bumps. I have really stubborn red bumps. Also kind of feels like chicken skin. It takes a lot for them to even diminish, let alone entirely go away. I'm pretty Pesky. sure I'm gonna live with them my yeah. whole life. But if I can do this and then put the AHA on top of it, which I think helps with the dryness of my skin, I'm getting a two for one. Mm -hmm. We have a couple questions. Yeah. Number one, can, what, which of these can help with underarm roughness? Oh. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say BHA. Yeah. So either of these, but a BHA. And AHA, the reason I don't say that mm -hmm. is the underarm can be a little sensitive, right? And AHA could, yeah. you know, you might feel a little bit of stinging or that sort of thing. So yeah. because of um, BHA is so kind of soothing and calming mm -hmm. as well. I would opt for that. And I like, especially if you're going to put on deodorant or something like that, with the really fine mist of this, it's not going to feel super heavy on your underarms. Mm -hmm. It's not going to feel occlusive. So you can just spray it right on and then finish with whatever deodorant or any other products you're putting there. And do you guys recommend applying a moisturizer to wet skin after the shower, or does it matter? Um, it, it doesn't matters. really matter, no. I mean... I know some people want to do it like right after to yeah. kind of lock that moisture in, but mm -hmm. um, it, you're going to benefit whether you do it right after or shortly thereafter. Yeah. Awesome. So moving right along. So we've well, actually, got body exfoliation. Yeah. Kind so of covered. AHA, BHA, very similar to the same benefits you would mm. get on your face. I yeah, would usually point. go BHA for anything that starts with the BHA. Well, starts with the B, bumps, blemishes breakouts if you do get them like on your back, back knee like we were saying earlier, and then AHA for rough dry skin texture, um, just overall hydration. I think that's a good call and it's kind of an easy way to remember it. We usually say, you know, AHA A above, BHA mm -hmm. B below, so you can kind of think of that. And you can mix and match Absolutely. them as well. So. Um, I think it's a great uh, point, you know, we say with all skincare, kind of experiment to see mm -hmm. which works best for you, but great leave-on exfoliating options for the body. Yeah. Then your skin is freshly exfoliated. You might want a little bit of moisture, or maybe you don't want to use one of the exfoliating True. body products and you just want a great workhorse standby moisturizer. We've got the Daily Replenishing Body Cream. Yeah, I really love this. It's so good. This has such a great texture too. I wonder if this seals It has on. three different ceramides in there. It has a peptide for firming. It just melts right into skin, doesn't feel too heavy, um, can be used all year round. I it's always so put good. too much product on, but I just love it. <laughs> it just feels so good. Yeah. It feels, you know, luxe and it feels, um, you can feel kind of the, the non-fragrant plant oils in there, mm -hmm. but it's not greasy. And yeah. I love it doesn't have that drag that some, right. you know, products have. So I also like good. to pop a little bit on my face here and there. Oh yeah. Just, I mean, all of our body products can be used on the face if That's you a good would point. like to. So this one, if you've run out of your moisturizer, this is one that you can rely on to just immediately pop right on and not worry about it. Yeah. I like to keep that one by my desk here yeah. and use it as a hand cream. Oh, good. When I need it. Yeah. yeah that's very good. I love that. And very it's also good. a great carrier too. If you want to add your boosters to any of our body products, this one, because it is such a 
gentle, well-rounded moisturizing formula, you can add your C15 for, for brightening mm -hmm. or add your oil booster for additional hydration. You can really play around with it. Good shout out to the boosters, yeah, mm -hmm. that you can add them to your body care as well. Yeah. Very good. Boost your body too. Boost your body. <laughs> <laughs> What do we have next? This retinol. is the Skin Smoothing Retinol Body Treatment. Another great option. Yeah. And I think this is particularly good. You know, one of the things, um, kind of the telltale signs, mm. you know, of aging are on hands, forearms, yeah. you know, neck, yeah. decollete area. Uh, and so retinol, of course, gold standard right. ingredient, anti-aging ingredient is great for getting on the body as well for some of those concerns. And this doesn't have a negligible amount of retinol in it. It's got a solid mid-range 0.1% retinol. Mm -hmm. So that's at the same level as our Intensive Wrinkle Repair Retinol Serum and our Ceramide Enrich Firming Moisturizer. So it's got a decent amount of retinol. It can really help enhance overall skin youthfulness, vibrancy, and soften the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, those first signs of aging. Yeah, so I think if you have, you know, gentle cleansing then you're doing leave-on exfoliation on mm -hmm. the body and you're adding a product like retinol definitely win-win absolutely uh taylor douglas says body boosters please hop on that with larger sizes ah. oh, <laughs> nice you'd have to use your c15 even faster exactly <laughs> exactly um these are great but no routine on your face or on your body is ever complete without sunscreen. Absolutely. Can't we kind of say it. just kind of, you know, I mean all of these are great, but you kind of just need to toss them aside if you're not going to use sun care, broad yeah. spectrum sun care yeah. on every area of body that is exposed. I think is so critically important. And this one really has a nice texture as well and it's yeah. an invisible finish. I don't uh, It's the extra care non-greasy SPF 50. Yeah. So having that 50 SPF is great. It does give you a bit of protection up front, but just because it's a 50 doesn't mean that you can go without reapplying it, especially if you're in direct sunlight. So if you're hanging out in the sun directly for over two hours or any sort of prolonged period of time, you will need to reapply it. But it's sheer fluid texture makes it really easy to kind of glide it right on. You don't even notice it. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's kind of the same thing. Like sunscreens have come such a long way. You know, I can right. see like people didn't want to put it on. It just felt like a chore. Mm -hmm. But this really feels like an elegant moisturizer that's Agreed. so easy to apply. So it'd be great if people get in the habit. And going back, you can apply it on your face too. I think oh, for you don't sure. need to go yeah, to the head beach to toe. and have separate sunscreens. Absolutely. It's a good one to take to the beach or the pool because mm -hmm. you can apply it anywhere. Yep. Apply it head to toe. Yep. Wow. All right. We've got some jump fun modifications or fun little tips and tricks using some products that you might not think of as body, body. products, with the exception of the lip and body treatment ball. Body is in the name. Yeah. But it's a really good standby for your lips, but you can take it other parts of your body. For um, sure. Like dry cuticles, yeah. really like that. If you have Elbows. just those real rough patches that mm -hmm. are dry and just need something else, you can either use it alone or you could layer it with any of these products as well. Yeah. Um, just to get that nice, you know, decadent layer of I also, hydration. I also like using it if I, I'm notoriously clumsy. Um, mm -hmm. So that means that I have scabs and things like that so those dry areas I do like to put that on there so at least it softens it so it doesn't feel like if I'm bending those areas with any scabs or injuries that it's going to crack yeah um, that's true and you actually want those to be remain intact as long as possible right because yeah. that reduces the the mark or the scar that can be left behind so yeah. that's a good tip yeah yeah and then this one uh, one of Paula's absolute favorite mm -hmm. products the uh, Triple Action Dark Spot Eraser. This one is with 2% BHA. Mm. We do have um, another Triple Action Dark Spot Eraser that has 7% AHA. Yeah. Um, and these both contain hydroquinone, and that really is a gold standard ingredient for, long story short, <laughs> helping to suppress excess melanin that's occurring in the skin that mm. makes some, um, you know, ends up looking like brown patches on the surface yeah. of skin. So if you have discolorations on your forearms, or this could be on face, mm -hmm. you know, neck, chest as well, this is a really great option. It's giving you that hydroquinone and exfoliation, again, all in one step. Really designed as more of a spot treatment. 
Deb, can you talk about Paula's um, hand routine? Because I know she has like a very, she's, she's very protective of her hands. Her hands look they, Yes. Because she believes that they show age so Yes, so absolutely. They do, um, and hers don't at all. So, <laughs> I mean, so she really loves this product. Um, and again, the hydroquinone is a gold standard. I know, you know, they're... There's all sorts of conversation about hydroquinone, but used in 2%, that's the amount that's in here, um, is a great option for discolorations on the back of hands, forearms. And then she is just neurotic about sunscreen application and reapplication. Um, and so when she washes her hands, she does reapply. Unlike most of us, I don't think we immediately no. reapply. She's the reason why I started carrying a travel size SPF with me just <laughs> In those moments that I remember, I don't always remember, or I'm not going back to my purse, but if I do, I will reapply it yeah. with Paula in mind. What would Paula do? Right. <laughs> right. Just need little bracelets. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, what are your thoughts on the research, sorry, on the research um, of hydroquinone for women of color oh. and potentially not needing, not, they shouldn't be using it? Well, I think that's... So a lot of the information about, there's some scary information about hydroquinone. Unfortunately, yeah. a lot of it is mis misinformation, and it's related to uh, things that were done and maybe not complete studies yeah. um, years and years ago. So first of all, again, we're talking about 2% hydroquinone. It is a gold standard for suppressing excess melanin production. In super rare cases, I think the concern is that it, in women of color, it might create darkness mm. um, in those areas, but that is super, super rare. Right. Um, so I think, you know, I have absolutely used hydroquinone myself, um, and I use it on same places, on the, my hands and the back of my forearms, uh, and it works great. Awesome. And with this, like the rest of it, you need to reapply that sunscreen. I think that's one of the best ways to make sure that those concerns don't get worse. Yeah, I think, you know, with this type of product, essentially, you know, it's ideal. If you have really pesky dark spots, then you want to use this regularly. For each person, that's going to be a little bit different. Once right. those areas start to appear, you know, less dark or more evenly blended with the surrounding skin, you can decrease how often you use it. But if you stop using it altogether or you're not using sunscreen, they're going to resurface. So we've got dark spots, we've got multifunctional lip and body balm, mm -hmm. use it head to toe, and then we've got our moisture renewal oil booster. Yeah, this is great. This one is great if you want to add some extra antioxidant nourishing, non-fragrant plant oils to any of your body products, maybe with the exception of the sunscreen because we want to let those actives kind of hang out on their own, not disturb them. But this one you can also use before your moisturizer to get that really good softening layer of hydration, followed by the heavier um, body lotion. It's really multifaceted. Again, use it on your cuticles, like we were saying with the lip and body balm. Use it on your lips. And I think that's. I think it's really hard to find an oil. Pro There's lots of oil-based mm -hmm. products on the market. We know that, but most right. of them have lots of essential oils, or they're highly fragranced. So mm -hmm. I think this is, and this has what eight or nine, nine different yeah. oils, um, non-fragrant plant oils in there. So I think that's really a standout, and another one that people might not consider, mm -hmm. like me, if I have oily combination skin, but thinking about adding it to a body product, it's a new way to use it. That's yeah. great. And it does kind of fit this gap, I think, between we, we have oils on the market that are really, really dry oils, and then mm. we have ones that you're sitting there for a minute massaging it in. Yeah. And I think this lands right in the middle, maybe slightly more on the dry side. But for me, that's really important because if I have to over massage it or if I don't feel like I'm getting that hydration, mm -hmm. if it's too far on either end of the spectrum, I'm not going to use it personally. Yeah. So this fits the gap right in between. Uh, Desiree uses the the booster for her flyaways. I've heard. Oh right. yeah, and as a makeup remover if yes. she's in a pinch. If she's traveling in mm -hmm. a pinch, I think that's a great tip too. So many different uses for all these great products. Exactly. <laughs> um, we have a, a couple more questions about um, lightening and hydroquinone. Mm -hmm. um, one is: Is it good for scarring? It depends on the type. If it's like a physical textured scarring. No, no. But if it's a post blemish mark, um, something 
Well, and even then, there are more effective treatments for post-blemish marks, like vitamin C or azelaic acid. Yeah, when you think of like true sun damage where mm -hmm. you have, and essentially what that means is the skin has been damaged at a deeper level yeah. and excess melanin is being produced and it's rising to the, the surface yeah. and appears as a brown patch or spot. Hydroquinone works to kind of suppress that, kind yeah. of putting like a seal on the leak. Um, and so I think scarring is different. Yeah. Again, if it is a true scar, you can minimize it over time, but this wouldn't resolve it. Yeah. What about mosquito bites? <laughs> uh, hydroquinone for mosquito bites? No. no. Not, no. <laughs> we got the question. Yeah, no. Interesting. I don't know what you would, I mean, there are products you could use to reduce like the redness, the and, redness and the irritation. And the, yeah. But yeah, you could play around with BHA, yeah, BHA. or like Calm Serum. The Calm Serum might be yeah. good. Yeah, I think that would be a good option. And BHA, I mean, because of its minor analgesic properties, mm -hmm. it can help a little bit, but still wouldn't be my first go-to yeah. um, for that. Although this concern. does have BHA in it. Oh, true. Uh, how often can hydroquinone be used? Every day. Okay. It can be used daily. It could be used, I know some people that use it twice a day, mm -hmm. um, especially if they're just getting started and they have some deeper discolorations and then they'll taper yeah. that off um, when they start to lighten, but daily. And uh, a question from Christy B11, will the hydroquinone help with melasma? Is melasma another word for dark spots or is it different? It's a type of discoloration. Um, it can be helpful with melasma, but the tricky, one of the tricky things about melasma is that you could see it start to fade away and then... Come back it, with a vengeance? Yeah, it comes back. Even worse Even than worse. before. Yeah, in areas you didn't see it before it went away. Um, so that makes it kind of an uphill battle regardless of what skincare products you use. But mm -hmm. yeah, I think hydroquinone can help if you can use it, vitamin C, azelaic. I think the people who have the best results, especially if they have stubborn discolorations, are probably doing a multi-product treatment yeah. using, let's say, a dark spot eraser. Maybe they're using our C15 mm -hmm. as well, adding that as a daily. For sure, again, the sunscreen, um, they're applying liberally and daily, mm -hmm. so. Um, which of these products is the best treatment for body aging? Well. So sunscreen. <laughs> That's the place Sunscreen to start. is the number one anti-aging. I mean, we will yep. just keep saying it and saying it. But sunscreen is the number one anti-aging product. Um, exfoliating, I think, is really important yeah. as well. So just the same way you can see those really good results on your face from a leave-on exfoliant. Mm -hmm. You know, less roughness, yeah. uh, more glow, even texture, and then adding like a retinol product. Yeah. I think would be a good option. Yeah, and I would say, I mean, if it's softening the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, starting with that exfoliant, of course, if you're using your daily sunscreen. But if it's more of that, like, almost thinning of skin or when you feel like it's not quite as plump or supple, mm -hmm. then introducing the retinol body treatment. Um, we had a question earlier on in the show about um, someone using a face sunscreen, one of our face moisturizers with SPF on the body, is that okay for totally. her to do? Absolutely. 100%. And if there's only one product that we need to purchase, I believe she's meaning within this setup, Setup. which one would you recommend? Mm. Well, sunscreen always. Yeah, so if we say <laughs> something besides sunscreen. Right. Um, what would be your answer? Because we might have different ones. Yeah. It would, for me, it would be one of the um, leave-on body exfoliant. Mm -hmm. For me, it would be the weightless um, body treatment with 2% BHA. Mm. And I like because I'm getting a whole mix of things going on, right? So I'm right. getting the leave-on exfoliation, the salicylic acid, which works on the surface and below the surface, mm -hmm. uh, and then the moisturization and some other great ingredients. Yeah. I would also say that product, for me in particular, but I think a lot of other people struggle with this, that those hard red bumps, um, it also makes a great product for you to apply if you're going to shave or wax oh. or do any sort of hair removal. Yeah, you do it point. to soften the skin and get that hair ready. 
Um, and then it's also great afterward to make sure you're not going to get any ingrown hairs. So it's really, really multifunctional mm -hmm. um, in the way that it treats the skin. So turns out we do have the same one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Lipsticky Tacos says, I'll buy whatever Deb tells me to. Oh, love you. <laughs> and Molly Gunn says, Paula's choice advice on SPF has changed my skin. Oh, okay. that's good. That's good. And, you know, we didn't really talk, I mean, we're talking about body, but feet too. Like, leave-on exfoliants yeah. are a great option uh, for feet. I actually even, it's not here, but I love our 2% BHA the liquid. liquid exfoliant on my heels like I use that regularly on my feet and it keeps my heels so smooth right? I gotta do that I you have to do I it feet. I've yeah. got to treat it I'll report back <laughs> and it's great to BHA again because of its analgesic properties you know if somebody has like kind of where the heels are a little bit cracked or mm -hmm. sensitive um, then you don't have to be concerned because it's actually soothing but yeah. so effective I love that I used, oh, it's paused due to poor connection. That's weird. Oh. Uh-oh. Okay, we're back. Paused. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> um, let me see. I lost my train of thought. I was going to say I used to use, well, I still have it um, in my cabinet, but our old 10% AHA treatment. Uh, oh, the, yeah. Um, the liquid one. Yeah. I, I put that on a cotton pad uh -huh. and rub it on my feet when they're oh, feeling perfect. dry. Yeah. They look dry and cracked. Yeah, I, I think that's that. a good idea. Yeah, and, absolutely. And then, sorry. <laughs> no, no, we want to um, know. I'll, I like to use the ten, the new 10% AHA treatment, mm -hmm. the, like the more the serum, serum texture. Mm -hmm. um, I'll put a dropper full of that each on my husband's oh. elbows oh. because his elbows get really mm -hmm. disgustingly dry. <laughs> so I'm just like, I need to help you here. Yeah. <laughs> what no, do you put good. on top of that exfoliant? Do you put anything like, like the a, body a hydrator? Um, yeah, I'll put, yeah, I'll put any kind of moisturizer just, yeah. on top. Oh, sure. it's good. Any old thing. It's good. Okay. A few more questions. Um, do you have anything good for dry skin on the body? Sorry if you've already said this. Yeah. So I would recommend first using an AHA body treatment. So our skin revealing 10% AHA, I think it's this guy. Nope, this one. Um, to help get rid of that dead built up skin that could be making your skin feel and actually be even more dry. Yeah. And then following up with either da the daily replenishing body cream or we don't have it out here, but the um, body butter as well. Oh yeah, that's a great option too. Yeah, the clinical body butter. Yeah, so we were earlier we were saying, you know, we have these body moisturizers that have leave-on exfoliants built in, mm -hmm. both AHA and BHA, 10% uh, AHA and 2% BHA. For those who don't want um, a leave-on exfoliant in their body uh, cream, we have the daily replenishing mm -hmm. uh, body moisturizer as well. We have a lot of people excited to to try a lot of these feet treatment okay. that we've been talking about. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I mean, there's really great options. So whether it's dullness, crepey skin, uneven texture, discoloration, um, and again, skin is skin. Yeah. So those things can occur not only on the face, but on the body. These are really good options. Mm -hmm. Are these um, uh, formulas okay for tattoos? Yeah, I mm -hmm. mean, just make sure you're not applying it while your tattoo is still healing. Um, and for most people that can take a few weeks, so just be delicate around that area. But once your tattoo mm -hmm. is healed, absolutely safe to put any of these products on and your tattoos cannot get enough sunscreen. So make sure you're lathering that on as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think we've gotten some questions before. I remember being in customer care and people would ask if the leave-on exfoliants would affect, negatively affect mm -hmm. their tattoo. And that ink really is living at a deeper yeah. level than where these exfoliants are working. So absolutely. not a concern there either. And they'll actually make them look a little bit brighter. Nice. So double duty because yeah. you didn't really have all that dead skin on top of it. True, true. Awesome. Well, I think that covers it. I think we got some good products yeah. in. I'm so excited we gave the All Over Hair and Body Shampoo a shout out. So if you're looking for a fragrance-free <laughs> body wash, um, fragrance-free body wash, be sure to check that out. And um, yeah, this was a fun topic. It was fun. Treat yourself head to toe. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Have a good day. Bye.